Are you looking to level up your author business? Are you pounding your head against a wall, wondering what your next step should be? Then join me, Daniel Wilcox. And me, Sasha Black, as we haul ass each week in a bid to level up. Level up. Come along for the ride as we delve deep into the business of writing, craft, entrepreneurship, and every level of the author journey. This is the Next Level Author Podcast. Hello Achievers, this is episode 22 of the Next Level Author Podcast, a podcast where we hold each other to account and track our step-by-step progress as we level up our author business. My name's Sasha Black and here with me every week is... Daniel Wilcox! (laughs) (laughs) Except you're not Daniel Wilcox, are you? (laughs) So tell everyone who you are. I am Faye Trask. And as of today, one of the newest co-hosts for the Great Writer Share podcast, Uh, unpublished, but (laughs) working on it. But soon, yeah, exactly, working on it. How how far through your manuscript are you? Uh, Actually, yesterday when I was doing my sprints, I realized that I'm this close to the finale. (laughs) I was freaking out. I'm like, ooh. So today I've been writing a lot of uh, blood and gut scenes. And oh, I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love, I love the climax of a story. I don't know about you, but I find I speed up the closer I get to the ending, like the faster I'm like typing and the ending just sort of like vomits out in this yep. wonderful, you know, word, word vomity uh, session of, you know, whatever. Anyway, uh, clearly I can't talk this evening. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I'm like... I was going through that whole gory scene and then I'm like, oh, podcast time. Oh, shaky, shaky. Okay. (laughs) No, no, no. It's only me. And uh, yeah. And you're filling in for Dan, who is your co-host. Yes. Dan is wonderful. I told him that this is the best. Let's not tell him that. (laughs) Well, this is the best birthday present I've had in my 33 years of existence. And I'm like, damn it, Dan. Now I owe you like my firstborn child or something. (laughs) Yes, and for everybody listening, I cannot believe that you agree to do this, but it is your birthday. So huge, yes. huge yes. Um, happy birthday to you. And thank you very much. And I did serenade you when we got on the yes, call. Yes, you so, did. Um, but not for everybody else listening, because that would no. just be mortifying. So <laughs> <laughs> that goes to your no. grave. My singing yes. goes to your grave. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, so this is um, the point where we usually see how each other's weeks were, see how you've been. So how have you been? I have been fantastic i've gotten so much writing done this week that i'm just i'm living on high street right now i'm just very happy with that i I love that when you're in the thick of a story and the words are just flowing and like there is no better feeling i get it is almost like i swear it's a form of endorphins i don't know if you can hear my door banging can you hear my door banging it's tapping but it's driving me insane (laughs) (laughs) i think uh i think my wife's putting us you can hear it. It's so bad. My wife's <laughs> yeah. putting our son together. What I'm just, going to... Your um, house is haunted. That's all it is. Yeah. Haunted. Yeah. Just for Dan, because he's not here. Oh, yeah. So we should, pro- we should probably talk about Dan. So Dan is off again uh, this week because um, he needed some time off. And also he's on his jollies this weekend. So he's off having a very nice family uh, weekend. So we miss you, Dan. Uh, yes. Come back soon. Um, and in the meantime, we're going to rock this podcast. Absolutely. Um, Okay, so tell me uh, a thing that you have enjoyed this week. Well, I got, I got two, two big ones. The first is uh, there's been these YouTube videos that are, I know GQ does one, it's called The Breakdown, where they have professionals that come in and watch scenes from movies and go, uh, that's not quite true or this and that. I found a bunch that were actually a linguist and dialogue coach that come in and they're like, well, this is where they're missing this accent. And I dive just deep down into that because I was trying to figure out how a certain accent would be. And I'm just like, oh, this is my new addiction. (laughs) I love it. Do you have a link you can share? I will definitely send that over to you. Uh, The other thing I have been enjoying is an album by this band called Radio Company, who the band is made up of Jensen Ackles from Supernatural. 
Okay. Uh, and oh, what the TV a show? Of his buddies. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And I, I have just completely succumbed to that album for the whole week because it's kind of mellow, but it's old western. Like it's this huge combination of stuff that just it so perfect it's very soothing <laughs> do you do you write music sometimes i can't write to music with lyrics okay. it has to be just instrumental mm -hmm. but i will drive and listen to regular music or like bands that have the same theme and then i'll get my ideas going it's like okay yep i got it <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I, I was listening to some music. Um, my wife, I think it was, yeah, I think it was my wife. Uh, she played me a song and I really struggled to hear the, hear the lyrics, but I really love lyrics. So what I often do is on Apple Music, you can press a button and it mm -hmm. will show you the lyrics. So I will read the lyrics as the song is playing. Yes. And uh, yeah, I caught an amazing lyric that was like, oh my God, this is the whole explanation for like one of my characters. So I was like, scribble, scribble, scribble. Um, you definitely okay. got to check out uh, one of their songs called The Sound of Someday. Because okay. just the thought, just the name of it is like, what does someday sound like? Yeah, very fantasy. <laughs> Love it. Or sci-fi even. Yes. Um, so I, um, I, pr I think I also have two things. So <laughs> fuck the rules. We'll just fuck go it. with, yeah, fuck it. We're going to go with, um, with, with all the things this week. Although I now can't find my thing. So where I put it, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Oh, that's concerning. Um, okay, so what my first thing, I went to the cinema um, and I went to see a film called Tenet, which is basically like the only new film in the UK at the moment. So since the cinemas opened, I went very early on when the cinemas reopened because I have like a, a cinema card thing that lets you go an unlimited amount of times. Um, and I went to see Tenet, which is a Christopher Nolan film so he did Inception, yep. uh, Interstellar, um, I think a couple of the Batman ones with uh, Christian Bale. Bale? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think he actually did um, The Dark Knight Rises. Yes Black yes. Heath Ledger in it. Yeah. Yes yeah that's right and um, oh my god it was such like classic Christopher Nolan like time time bendy warpy basically the whole without giving any spoilers the whole premise was that there was some technology that would invert time so everything would go backwards so like if for example there was a bullet on a table instead of the bullet falling as gravity would in our world the bullet would fall up because oh. it went backwards like the whole thing was awesome and it was you know mind-bogglingly complicated but in a in in the same way inception was it was just fantastic so um yeah, I highly recommend everybody uh, go and uh, watch that at the cinema. And the other thing that I have fallen in love with this week is my Apple Pencil. Um, mm. I have an, a, a new iPad and you can handwrite on these new an uh, iPads and it is literally changing my whole <laughs> life. I love that I cannot carry p bits of paper around everywhere and um you can like if you make a mistake it's easy to rub it out and the whole thing stays neat and you can resize it change the colors and oh my god i am in love with my apple pencil so yeah that's, that's my awesome. other cool thing okie dokie so weekly confessional i don't know if you have a sin you'd like to confess but um <laughs> i i kind of do <laughs> Oh, how revealing. <laughs> Do go ahead. <laughs> uh, well, I have my accountability that I always post in the group mm -hmm. that I just last week was junk. Just junk. This past week, much better. <laughs> so I've only failed, um, I'll count this week, two days of target practice that I have not yet completed. So target. I got to get out there after it. <laughs> what sort of target? Uh, it's for archery. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Oh, I think I do. You put that in in the in the Facebook group. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. I need to pay far far closer attention because I didn't realize it well, was archery. I had, I had posted it 
and then I went back and I edited it because I'm like, you know what? If I don't put this in my accountability, I am not going to do it. Ah, uh, okay. Well, that is awesome that you do that. I know another writer who is an archer. Uh, Meg Cowley is. She's an epic fantasy writer, and she is also an archer. And it's like two badass women as as archers. I love it. I'm like I'm like in awe of you. You guys would make amazing assassins. Um, for my confessional last week, I was supposed to work on Sirens and I was supposed to work on the prose um, course. So I did do both of those things. Um, I'm now halfway through the novella, uh, which I think I've written in the last 10 days. It's only like 20, I think it's going to end up between probably 22, 24k. So it's not going to be very long, uh, but that's the point of a prequel is a novella even it's only supposed to be short um and then on the prose course ah, oh, so <laughs> poor dad I've been trying to talk to dad about this all week and we keep missing each other but um so basically I want to deliver as big amount of value as I possibly can and in order to do that I need to go in deeper onto all of the topics that were already in the book which is already a massive tome so but but the way that um, I had been structuring the course, everything was shallow and I wasn't feeling like I was getting enough depth because I was trying to include everything, basically. And um, it all got a bit too much. So I haven't scrapped anything. I've kept it all. But what I'm going to do is more or less go topic by topic and release them as smaller courses. So um, the first one I'm doing is the senses. And, um, you know, there'll be more like a couple of hours of course, but really in depth, really intensive on that one subject. I say a couple of hours, I actually have no idea how long it's going to come out at the moment. But um, yeah, and then I will take another topic and I'll go really in depth on that. So I'm now having a, pl a blast because I'm doing even more research and coming up with loads more ideas. And it's just allowing me, I'd forgotten how much I like to dig deep. And so, yeah, I'm excited because now I feel like I'm going to be giving a shitload of value to everybody. Um, and that's what's really important to me. So, yeah, I'm super excited again and I will actually get it out on time. Oh. I'm excited for that to come out because I'm just like, all right, hurry up. I want to yeah. see <laughs> Well, so what I hope will happen is that I will release, like, once I've done one, I'll, I'll take a short break, but then I should be able to, once I've got, like, the model for it, I should then be able to release, like, lots of them over the coming year. Um, and, and, you know, it might take me a year to get the whole, um, right. you know, all of the topics covered in the book, but then I can bundle them. So if people just want to wait until it's all one, that's fine. Well, you can do them individually, whatever, or pick and choose. <laughs> totally up to you. <laughs> All right, so last week I forgot the comments. Um, and I'm thinking maybe I'll just wait and do all of the comments next week. I don't know. Or, or should we go through some of the comments? What do you think? We, yeah. We, okay, yeah, fine. go ahead. All righty. So we are going to start with, sorry for all the clicking. Um, so episode 20 was the first lot of comments, which was how fast can you write? So um, I'll whiz through some of these comments. Victoria LK Williams said um, she can't write shit when other people are around. I don't, how do you feel about that? I can't, I can't either. I, I, I usually can, but like today we have my boyfriend's younger brother here and he just keeps coming in and he's like, talk, talk, talk. I'm like, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> No talking. Smile and nod, but get out. <laughs> yes. yes, look at my eyes. Do you do you feel hated? Fuck off now. Yes. I, I can usually do pretty good because little rebellious me writes at work all the time. So I'll be writing mm. someone talk. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Whatever you say. <laughs> what do you do? I am an administrative assistant at a sawmill. Oh, okay. Yeah. That is cool. I am um, yeah. <laughs> Twin Peaks, did you say? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant. I am. Um, I love that you're a rebel like that. I absolutely love it. All the time. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Girl, after my own heart. Oh. Um, okay, so Victoria says uh, she can dictate two to three thousand words in a sitting uh, if she's typing more like twelve hundred. Uh, Caitlin Duncan said um, she used to consistently write 6,000 words a day while she was ghostwriting, but now not so much. She feels comfortable around 1,500 words per day uh, during her one and a half to two hour slot in the morning. Uh, oh my God, between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. I think I just sicked a little bit in the back <laughs> of my throat. 
I can't do mornings. I literally want to fucking die at like 5 a.m. Just don't get me up until it's like 8. Dad, oh my God, I hate him a little bit. He gets up and he's like, at, like at 8 o'clock because I'm like, hello, morning, are we ready to sprint? <laughs> and he's like, hi, I just done a 10K run and I'm like, fuck off, I haven't had coffee. <laughs> oh, I love him. I like, it's so inspirational to me, but also, no, I just, just know. Just, yeah. <laughs> I stopped doing the 5 a.m. mornings when I got out of the military. I'm like, I'm done. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And those mornings are brutal. I used to, well, anyway, that's not right. But anyway, uh, okay. So Jeff says um, his speed depends on if he's doing typing or dictation. Um, he gets about two times speed when he dictates. Um, nice. Yeah. An average 20 minute uh, sprint for him is about 650 words to 900 words. That's quite a range, but I, I'm a bit like that too. I don't know about you with the sprints, it varies. Yeah, it varies. Uh, Holly Line says it varies so much. Uh, she can, when she's in flow, write 1,500 to 2,000 words an hour. That's quite a common figure, I feel. Like a lot of people hover around that. Um, uh, figure Ritty says 500 words some days uh, 500 words an hour some days she can hit two and a half thousand um, again so lots more comments we had some comments from Meg and from Michael and Amy and Yanni um, and then in episode 21 last week <laughs> which question I've forgotten oh wait uh, how do you know when it's time to change your business focus I think yes yeah um, that's what it was cool good because I had definitely <laughs> forgotten for a second I watched them religiously <laughs> oh. Um, okay, so Kerry says, I'm still pretty early, uh, so main focus is writing with a sprinkling of social media presence. I think when I shift, it'll be closer to when I'm ready to publish. And Victoria says, um, uh, when my clients do the snowbird thing and return to FL, I, is that Florida? I think that must yep. be Florida. Yeah, I know that there's no point in trying to write. I have to be creative for them and their gardens. I used to try and keep up the writing pace, but the guilt over what I should be doing versus what I want to do had me doing a piss poor job on both fronts. Oh, I feel, I feel that. I feel that now for like parenting and writing. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So that was the comments. Uh, let's go back to the uh, running order and then I will know what I'm doing. Oh, yes. Oh, dum 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 question of the week oh boy <laughs> over to you so our wonderful dan had to help me with this because i came up with a question and then he's like well phrase it like this okay <laughs> so in your opinion how has your brand as a rebel author contributed to your success how important is a brand to an author mm. <laughs> that is a good question um Wow. Okay. Um, so it, that's really hard because I didn't start out as the rebel author. It sort of evolved. I think it sort of came out of um, the Facebook group and the Facebook group had been going a little while before um, that came about. And I suspect, I think from memory, it happened all around the time of me wanting to start the podcast. Um, in terms of how it's affected my brand, I think I think it's intricately woven with so many other things that all happened at the same time. So I left my job and I went full time, which gave me more time, which meant I could create more, sort of. <laughs> the first year was tricky, but um, <clears throat> that led to the podcast, led to me spending more time in the Facebook group, which then grew the group. Um, and yeah, so I, I think it's hard to say whether it was the branding of Rebel that had the impact or the fact that I had more time. What I do think had an impact is not necessarily the fact that it's Rebel branding, but more that I found the thing that feels like me the most. So Everybody talks about, you know, how you have to find the branding that's most you. And I always talk about those three values being motivational, knowledgeable and rebellious. And I think once you embrace those things, you embrace them at every single level. And therefore you are providing a more comprehensive, um, well, a brand, but experience for everybody that interacts with you, you know, 
so I take that rebel very seriously because you know I even in my autoresponders which I'm now redoing but I make sure there's some kind of rebellious something or other in my autoresponders you know I um not today but uh, almost every single day I wear rebel author branding clothing you know uh even when I write guest posts or I go on other podcasts I make sure I'm cheeky or sarcastic or sweary you know um and I think the effect of that is that I attract pe- I, I attract other people who like that, I think. So I, I actually think branding is one of the most important things that you can do as an author. Um, and I know that's horrible because loads of people are like, oh, but I don't know what my branding is. I don't know who I am as a writer. And I'm like, yeah, but forget thinking about it in terms of, you being a writer just think about it in terms of you what is most you when when are you being 110 percent you like think about those occasions is it when you're outside is it when you're deep in the weeds of research about historical events is it when you know when you start to look at those things that mean the most to you and then you weave them into your brand i think that's when you start to attract um like-minded people um and i suppose the only other thing i would add is that i think indie authors as a whole are quite rebellious so um it 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 fits naturally in in the community i think yeah Um, absolutely (laughs) yeah like you know we are saying a big fuck you to traditional publishing essentially that's kind of what's happening not that everybody you know i will eventually pursue traditional publishing if albeit for selfish reasons but um you know and, and there are lots of hybrid authors but i think the concept of being indie is rebellion um I don't know. I don't know if I've answered this one well enough. But yes, I do think I think you have. Important. Absolutely. Because I, and this is, now I hate Dan because I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, I say fuck you to like 95% of everything. Like, hey, go do this. Nah, fuck you. I don't want to. <laughs> so what do you feel is like most you? What is, you know, what about you know one of the only things that you told me on this podcast about you is that you do archery so how how you know is that is it is it about weapons is it about the the power that you derive from that is it you know what is it that you love about archery well the archery started kind of funny everyone thinks that well actually it's a fact that when hunger games came out there was a huge influx of female archers because of katniss everdeen I was Legolas, like way back in the day, but because the setup is so expensive, my little rebellious self had to stay in its spot until I had the money to be like, all right, give me, give me, give me, give me. And I picked up bow hunting because my boyfriend is an avid, avid hunter. And he's like, let's go hunting, let's go hunting. I, I've had my fill of guns in the military. So I'm like, I want to challenge taking that bow and arrow, going into the woods, having to actually sit there and take your time and all this precision is much more challenged. It takes two seconds to pull a trigger. It takes a lot more to hold the arrow and wait and wait and time it. So I I really care about everything that's very in depth that you have to really put in an effort because if you don't put in an effort it's just it's mcdonald's you know here you go whatever it's not it's not worth it Hmm. and what genre do you write dark fantasy i hope (laughs) okay so i'm definitely seeing like some you know badass warrior um you know um, like something to do I'm gonna have to think about this because I can't do this off the top of my head but there's definitely like there's a there's a there's a something there and you know I'm I'm assuming like what like what kind of colors do you think of when you think of you what do you associate with you oh me lime green instantly my truck is a black truck and I have lime green decals in a second not a not a question about it when I was growing up uh did you ever see the show Xena, Warrior Princess, and mm-hmm. Hercules? 
<sighs> those are my favorite. Xena was my hero. And yeah, so- see, and she's a badass woman, woman she warrior, is. right? Yes. So there's a, there is a theme here. There is a theme going on here. So I'm liking it. <laughs> yeah, like your your whole br- branding is around badassery. So that's a yeah. pretty fucking cool brand to have, you know? <laughs> yes, I love it. Yeah, yeah. So I reckon you, I reckon you can, you can pull some branding out of that. I think you, you're, you are going along the right track. Um, okay, cool. So um, I guess you, we need to say how we are going to level up our business this week. Ooh, that is very good. I'm going to let you go first because I need to <laughs> think about that for a minute. <laughs> Okay, so I am going to continue um, uh, with both of the things that I was uh, mentioned last week. So uh, the first one is sirens. I hope to get more words written. Um, I and then also working on the prose course. I would very much like to have. Well, I'm not going to say what I would like to have because then I have to deliver it. But yeah, I need to do quite a lot of work on that. Um, Mm. but we will yeah we'll see how much I can get done nice I think uh for my leveling up I'm going to go back through my manuscript and find where exactly because I have a list of the scenes that need to be finished but I'm actually gonna finish at least three scenes I'm gonna shoot big and say three scenes for amazing next week all right it's so close <laughs> yeah it is are, are you going to leave it when you've done it and rest it or are you going to go straight into edits uh i'll probably go straight into edits because i left it for like two weeks and i missed my characters mm-hmm. and i'm at the second half of the book so the first half is definitely forgotten, forgotten. <laughs> yeah. yeah i i know, understand that <laughs> like intimately i can never remember anything that i've written um okay so i guess the audience question of the week is the same question uh, yes. what what is your branding and uh how important is branding uh for yeah for your author business all right yeah. thank you so much for joining me today thanks for having me all right bye everyone bye Hungry for more? If you enjoyed this podcast, you can hear more of my angelic accent and Dan's dulcet tones on our other podcasts. For more of me, check out the Great Writer Share podcast. For more of me, listen to the Rebel Author podcast. We'll be back next week holding each other to account as Dan and Sasha become next level authors. authors.